Here we are on Global TV Talk Show once again. Um, I'm in our Palm Desert studio, and Angie Weinberger is in her Zurich, Switzerland studio. Welcome, Angie. Thank you, Ed. Welcome. And Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you. Happy Holidays to everybody listening, too. Yeah. So we're going to talk about purpose and clarity about who you really are. And I would think you already know who you are, but you said that uh, you've uh, read a book and you're thinking about things and um, maybe it's the time of year or maybe it's the kind of work that you're doing now that has given you a new perspective. So tell us a little bit about the book, uh, about what the perspective finding your finding has been which yeah, uh, caused yeah. caused you to want to talk about it today yeah 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 so maybe i should just um explain to the listeners who have not you know known us for that long that um i started global people transitions more than 10 years ago and you know i used to have a corporate career so when we met originally i used to work for pwc um and i used to have a corporate career in hr with the focus on global mobility and when I started my business, it was always like a long-term dream of mine, but I hadn't really thought about, you know, starting a business that just consists of me. So my original vision of the business was always a bigger business, like, you know, at least with, that, that, let's say, three to five people working with others, having a team, but also having partners that, you know, could cover certain topics. And um, I came across Paul Jarvis a few times already um, over the last 10 years, and I really like his work. I also once attended a course that he developed, um, which is called Chimp Essentials. And um, Paul is basically, I would say he's basically an artist, but he has also very, very strong programming skills. <laughs> and, um, and he wrote this book called Company of One. And when I read this book a few years back, I realized that what I've been building with my company is basically one of those companies of one. It's not a traditional startup that you scale up. It's basically a brand around me. And I think, you know, if we look into um, what people currently want from their work, I think a lot of people actually, you know, could think a bit more about their own brand and building their own brand and building a company of one in the medium to long term. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, most of us, you know, we have already a pretty good life. We're not struggling for survival. And but what many of my clients often tell me is what they're missing in the current, you know, hamster wheel is purpose. And that's why I think this is an important topic and a great inspiration. So thanks, Paul Jarvis. Purpose of your career, of how you're running your business now or running your own life? Yeah. And, you know, you, I, I guess, you know, what you discover, you know, if you, if you build your own brand and if you work for yourself and, you know, for example, you're dedicated to helping others, then, um, you discover who you are, really are um, and, you know, why you're here on this earth, basically. Mm. So, you know, for me, it was like finding out that I'm, I really enjoy helping people one-on-one -on -one or, you know, like helping people maximize their potential, getting out their potential, bringing their teams to higher performance, um, getting together as teams and, you know, becoming teams instead of just single players. So there's a lot of things that, you know, I think we can do when we really know who we are and why we're here. And that's that, why we're here is, you know, a bit more philosophical, maybe. Yeah, let's back up a little bit about you just mentioned teams rather than being a single player. Uh, what does that mean to you? So, you know, when we when you look at the current corporate world, especially something that I can observe in Switzerland, you know, Often we have, let's say, 10 people. They're officially part of a group or a team, yeah, but they don't work like a team. They're like, you know, like a football team, 
but they're not working together and playing together. They're not helping each other, they're not supporting each other. So one of the things you know I really enjoy is to bring those teams together so that they actually collaborate and work together as teams under good leadership. It's often a leadership problem more than a team problem. But I think you know this is something that is very um very enjoyable and maximizes performance and also you know helps people to feel better at work. So this becomes a self um self-taught kind of a thing then right because uh, you're a business owner you're a founder um you also have deep corporate experience but in, in the role that you're playing today you're you're an owner of more than one business function and um yet you are building uh, rebuilding or reformatting the system that you operate in um, and so almost like a, a reformation. I don't know, <laughs> it's a big word, but, uh, <laughs> but, but just a new way of being a leader, um, growing yourself into that role that is obviously taking on additional meanings for you at this stage. Yeah, and you know, I mean, the client is usually somebody who is either in a leadership role just took over a new team for example or it's the whole company the whole team that actually needs support and they say well we need someone to help us in this process um so so you know you can you can individually coach leaders yeah you know, or you can develop whole teams together and i think both is needed coaching is one-on-one -on -one executive coaching has this limit <laughs> and you you know you will only talk to individuals and help individuals along the way which is very rewarding and i love to do that but you know working with a whole team and getting them to play together i think that's even more rewarding and my vision is also um that's inspired by another book called oh let me think about that's called i just forgot about it but <laughs> it's about organizations and you know self organizing teams and my vision is, you know, that we don't really need managers in the future, but we, you know, especially in our like modern um, digitalized world, we have self-organized teams and maybe we have somebody who's like a scrum master. Yeah. Or like, you know, like a bit of a middle person who helps everyone get away with, you know, take away blockages, help them get their work done, et cetera. Coach. And yeah, like a coach, but in a different sort of setting like someone you know he's like some more of the center center of the team scrum master i think is the best uh the best way to describe it and how would you describe a scrum master um yeah so uh the scrum master is basically the person who makes sure that the team knows what to focus on how to prioritize how to prioritize get blockages out of the way organize resources um, ensure communication with other departments if they're necessary, ensure communications with clients, um, make sure that there's a team branding, etc. Yeah. It's a different role than the classical, let's say, manager we used to have in the past. Because people don't want to be managed, they want to develop. So they're looking for uh, a, de a developer mentality, a, a coach, a... Uh... Yeah um absolutely i, I, I don't know I think like you recently yeah you recently posted something connected to this topic on on linkedin uh, because nowadays you know where we live in this world with so with flat hierarchies digitalization process driven um the the old uh, let's say management structure the old idea of you know tailorism that was you know, basically many, many management approaches, they came from, let's say the car industry. They don't work anymore. They make everybody feel stressed and lose their purpose and lose their energy and not wanting to come to work on a Monday morning. And so, you know, I think also in, in the corporate world, we need to change approaches. Not everybody can be self-employed, obviously. Not everybody can start their own business. We, but we need to have a different mindset also inside corporations. And it's more that, you know, self-driven, self-organized team approach than anything else. So in a, in a 
big company, um, maybe even small company, I don't know, but in a big company, um, people are afraid to, I mean, they have an innate fear of looking stupid or doing something extreme. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're more rigid or they're, they're more yeah. reluctant. I think, I think it boils down to the existential fear of losing your work. And that's another reason why I would encourage everybody to start a side, a side business. <laughs> you know, if you don't start a main full-time business, but try to start a side business. Yeah? Because that fear of losing your job and not being able to secure another job at a certain age, let's say, you know, 50 plus, for example, that often leads to people accepting conditions that aren't good for their health and aren't good for their mental health. And I think most of, you know, the fear driven culture in organization is based around, you know, if you don't do what I tell you to do, you know, we might make you redundant because at the end of the day, you're just a resource. Yeah. And to be honest, it's sometimes embarrassing when I think of, you know, we, we work in a department where we call uh, people human resources. It's, to be honest, it's, it's, it's not a very good approach. <laughs> So what what would you call I don't want to work I don't want to work in HR anymore honestly Would you rather work in a people development I would probably yeah I would probably accept it better if it was called people um but I think you know also I mean this is something I say also in lectures and in in discussions I think also, you know, a whole like silo driven culture in organizations, you know, the system, the structure that we've built, let's say, you know, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and um, finance, HR, corporate, la la la. I think, you know, also that is completely outdated. Yeah. We need to get rid of all of this. Well, let's go back to and that. Modern book. organizations do that. Huh? Yeah. 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 Let's go back to that book, uh, Company mm -hmm. of One. And uh, summarize, if you will, uh, uh, what the clarity you gained. I mean, you know, what, uh, I mean, this is what's causing uh, this rethinking, right? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I guess one clarity that came when I read the book was everything that I've done to build a business is completely okay. It's okay that I did not, build a startup company that is scalable because for what I want to do and how I want to spend my time, a company of, of one is probably the better option. Yeah. So that was, I think, the first thing I understood. Another thing I understood, and I think that's also resonating with a lot of digital nomads and international global people, potential clients I speak to, even friends and family, yeah, is you know, we, we want to have after having spent years in 50 to 60 hour jobs, we want to have more time for our loved ones. We want to have more time to travel the world and to be in places that we always wanted to be in. So um, one of the things that, that Paul is very good at is that he says, for example, you know, I work, let's say, he works approximately 10 months in a year. And then he takes four weeks off in the summer. He takes four weeks off over Christmas. He has that time totally for himself. And this is where he gets his creative energy and where he gets his spark. So my aim is also, my personal aim is to live a life that is like that, where I can also take longer stretches where I either work from anywhere or um, not even work at all if I don't feel like it. God, so that's a, that's a dream write. come true, isn't it? Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me more about your drive to find a couple of new clients for the new year. So um, if this resonates with someone who's listening, I would just suggest that they start to call me and we have a conversation about this because some people, you know, as I said, you know, they have fears, obviously, you know, but sometimes it's also some people, you know, they know 
that they just need a bit of encouragement. And that bit of encouragement, I'm happy to give everybody because I know it's doable. You know? And I know that you can make an income without having to work in a corporate career. And especially if you have a bit of saving, that helps. <laughs> and if you have a bit of a buffer, you know, that helps. So I think you know it's a matter of self-confidence. It's a matter of branding. It's a matter of knowing certain things and learning certain things. And it's also a matter of energy and regular coaching. So for me, this is always something, you know, when I feel stuck, I get a coach. When I feel like I'm not moving forward, I get a coach. And then I usually move forward to the next level. Uh, so you're involved in LinkedIn and um, have you participated in the LinkedIn challenge? Yeah, so I guess that's the last thing um, that, you know, we should mention today. So just for fun and because it's Christmas, we're doing this side income challenge on LinkedIn. Um, so if you um, take a look at Global People Transitions, uh, my team is running that challenge. And every day we're giving a few ideas or new idea of, you know, how you could generate an income on the side, not, you know, with a corporate job, not by finding a job, but just by using some ideas that people just not think about usually. That's it. So oh, that, that's really interesting. So let's talk a little bit about that article that you wrote, uh, which we did a talk show about, the 10 commandments for global mobility, this being uh, Christmas time and um, you know holiday time uh, in, in many different uh, aspects. So um, that's gotten a lot of play, the 10 commandments for global mobility, not only because of our own distribution, but I've, I've been seeing it. And uh, people have recirculated uh, our own uh, show. Um, I didn't ask them to do it. I'm not paying anybody to do it. Uh, but they're passing it around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I love that. <laughs> because next thing, I want to talk about the Ten Commandments in public, like life. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. Were you always this much of a leader? No. <laughs> <laughs> so one day you woke up and say, well, I'm going to put a different dress on. And I'm going to comb my hair that way or that way. And, uh, and all of a sudden you're um, not uh, who you were. You're a, a new person. You're, you've sort of uh, found your voice. Oh, you yeah. found found the purpose and you want to talk about it. Yeah, I think, I think Sheryl Sandberg, uh, you know, she wrote Lean In probably yeah. 12 years ago. And one of the things that I noted when I, when I read her book was you have to be number one in something. No. So, okay, I have to be number one in something. So I have to be number one, maybe number one global mobility think tank. I don't know. So I just wrote down number one in global mobility. Um, and then I started, you know, to work on certain topics. And I, I, I honestly, I think, you know, that's something we covered already, you and I. If you have found your voice, your authentic, your true voice, and you understand, you know, how unique that voice is in comparison to other voices, you're automatically a leader. You know, there's, you just, it just comes. It just goes out there. And so what about this aspect of imposter syndrome impacting that? Yeah, that's why I say, you know, if I get stuck, I get a coach. Because obviously, you know, we all have our limitations. We all have our issues. And I don't know if I said it already, but I'm just going to say that now. You have to let that shit go. <laughs> you just have to let it go. It's old stuff. It's not related to today. And once, you know, you work through that, and that's why we have the coaching profession. That's why we have therapists in the world. Once you let that go, everything else falls into place. Well, I'm going to be a global PR therapist. That's a uh, good slogan. 
I think you already are a global PR therapist. Ed. Amen. No, global PR shrink. Well, we're talking with, uh, in case you didn't know, we're talking with Andrew Weinberger, who's in Zurich, Switzerland, and the company is Global People Transitions and uh, dot com, Global People Transitions dot com. And uh, when are you going to quit for the year? Are you uh, going to um, stop working this weekend or <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm going to work until the 23rd, which I usually do that. Like sometimes I even work until the 24th, which is, you know, in Germany, that's where we put up the Christmas tree. It, it's for us, it's a big day, the 24th. Um, and then, you know, we have the family dinner on the night already, Christmas Eve. So I'm probably going to work until the 23rd. And then after Christmas, I'm planning to fly to India. Wow. Yes tell you more travel more travel more fun 2023 can start way to go so uh have a great holiday thank you you too ed and thank you happy holidays for everybody thank you yeah merry christmas take care bye bye looking forward to 2023 yeah uh, positive <laughs> thanks for being on global tv talk show again a pleasure, as okay. always. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.